All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We got a new bike sitting in front of us. You guys probably already saw the thumbnail or you're just scrolling through YouTube and saw this bike and maybe you wanted my personal opinion on it because I'm always honest in everything I say. Uh, but I do wanna say right off the bat really quick is that if you're new to the channel, my name is Jonathan, I do a lot of e-bike reviews. And then second off is that they actually sent this bike to me for free, but they didn't tell me anything. They didn't give me a timeline. They didn't say what I need to say about the bike. They just said, hey, we want you to review and give your honest opinion. I was like, okay, cool. So I could basically say whatever I want. If it's trash, it's trash. If it's good, it's good. If you guys already know about this bike, it's a year old by now or a little bit over a year old. So it's a little bit behind on a video review, but this is a very good priced bike for what you get. So this is a $2,100 bike right now on sale. The normal price is about 2,400 bucks. So $2,100 right now, you get a thousand watt hub motor with a peak of 2,000 watts. And you have a 33 amp controller in here as well, which is insane. And to put that in perspective, the Rev 1 sitting right here is 52 volt. This is also 52 volt. This only has a 28 amp controller. So this really will beat this in power wise. I'm assuming it should. It's also lighter as well. I think it's in the 80 pound range. And then the Rev 1 is actually like 93 pounds. So. I'm excited for this bike. I'm hoping it doesn't feel too cheap. You have a lot of good stuff on here. You got a nice half throttle, leather grips, hydraulic brakes, seven speed Shimano, which you don't get on the Rev 1 or some of these other e-bikes of the Super 73, you don't get that either. Um, nice cable management. You got a nice headlight up here. You do have some cheaper tires. They do say they're puncture resistant, but I don't know how well that's gonna be. I don't know. I'm kind of worried about them to be honest. Uh, nice red rims that match the paint. The paint is one of the nicest things that I've seen. So if you guys ever go on their website, and you check out these bikes. They don't look that great in the pictures, but when you see them in person, they are so glossy and shiny and they have a metallic look to them. It, it's just insane how they look. You just have to see one in person to understand how nice it is. Uh, talk about some more stuff on the bike real quick. You got suspension up front, adjustability as well. You got BMX handlebars, you have fenders, and then you have some decent pedals, they're okay. You got a class two sticker right here, which I like because technically we unlocked this bike. It does come as a class two e-bike at 20 miles an hour, but all you have to do is go in the settings, the pass like 1919 and then you just unlock the bike and you're good to go and you can do like 35 or 36 miles an hour uh, you have rear suspension back here i don't think it's adjustable it doesn't look adjustable at all not on the step through design um so Real quick, this is a step-through design. They do have a standard design that has a bar that goes all the way across here. It's really gonna depend on preference or if you have back issues or you're a shorter person, you definitely might wanna look into this. So what makes it easier as a step-through is you kinda just put your feet this way and then you can kinda slide onto the bike like this. Instead, if you have back problems or you're shorter, you're not gonna be able to get on and off the bike just like what I did right now. So that's where a step-through design comes in and I will say, when I sell these bikes a lot, um, a lot of people are looking for step-through design, so they're very, very popular to compare to the normal ones that don't have the step-through design. So let me bring in here closer to the bike and I wanna show you the rear section. So you probably noticed as I was talking about the bike, the rear section is very long compared to the seat. And that's because the seat that comes on it is made for one person, but they have an accessory on their website that extends the seat all the way back here. And the cool thing is they already give you pegs. So if you wanna get that seat and have someone ride with you, you can already put your feet back here. Or if you wanna do some willies, cool, stand on the pegs, pop this thing up and uh, do some badass willies. Or uh, you don't have to do that and you can get a basket for the back. That's another accessory they have on their website. And you can have a huge basket if you do Uber Eats or you just gotta go to the store, pick up some groceries so you can bolt that onto the back. Looks super, super nice. So here is a look at the bike when it's dark out so you guys can get an idea of how the tail light looks. Looks pretty nice. It should get brighter as we push the brake levers. You also have turn signals back here. I'll show you in a second. Uh, real quick, this is how the headlight looks. It looks very bright. I like the color of it as well. It doesn't look as wide though. It looks like it's right in the middle of the garage, but we'll find out when we do take it to work in a separate video. It's not gonna be this one, but the headlight does seem bright, so I'm not gonna complain about it. So you do have turn signals up here as well. So if you wanna hit the left, come back here. You guys can see how that is. I will say it is not the best. It is very, uh, how could you say, it's like dim. No one's really gonna notice that little turn signal right there. It's cool, it comes with it, but uh, I'm not a big fan of it. And then this is how the tail light looks if you hit the brake lever, so it does get brighter. I like that, it's a great feature. All right, so now that you guys know a little bit more about this bike, if you didn't already, uh, I'm gonna charge this thing tonight and we're gonna take it out tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in about two seconds.
All right, guys, so a week later, we're finally out here on the X-Class e-bike. Yeah, it took me a while from making that first part of the video in the garage until actually riding it. I was gonna do it the very next day, but temperatures of 110 degrees, but that's not what you're here for. You're here for the actual test and how I feel about this bike. So we're gonna do a speed test. You know, we start this off right in the beginning of the video because I've got full battery charge. And I was seeing 37 miles per hour on here, but I don't think this is right. Um, I don't feel like I'm doing 37 miles an hour. I feel like I'm doing roughly like 34-ish, maybe 35. I think more close to like 34. All right, so I'm gonna get in the shade because it's pretty hot out here. I've been uh, testing out the speed to see if that's accurate or not. So exactly what I said, 34.3 miles per hour. If you guys can see that on the screen right there. So exactly what I was saying. So this is off. So we actually need to change the wheel diameter in the setting so this matches with GPS. I'm pretty sure it's this right here. It's HD. I'm gonna change this from 24 to 22 and that should give us the right speed now. So I'll go test this out right now. Let me reset this and then we'll uh, see if that fixed the issue. All right, so I'm seeing 34 on the display right now. 35. I wonder if we're actually doing 35 or maybe it's still slightly off just a little bit. We'll do this in real time. I'll get in the shade and pull out my phone. I did reset this. So yeah, okay, so 35 miles an hour now. So 35.3 is what we hit. So now that is accurate. So you guys that are doing this test at say 37 or 36, you need to change this to 22 and then you'll be uh, accurate because 24 is not right. All right, so now that we got the speed out of the way and we know we're doing about 35 miles per hour and how to reset that, um, overall, I didn't wear my gloves because I wanted to get a feel of the grips. And I will say that I don't mind how they feel, but I don't like the fact that they're not locking grips. So these can move, like you can move these however you want. The good thing about it is they're pretty hard to move and you don't have to use any tools to move them. So once you move them to the right spot, just hold on to the bike and you're good to go. But if you're like monster gripping it, you hit a, like your brakes really hard in the front, you can uh, make these slide ever so slightly. So I would like to see locking grips on here. Another thing I'm noticing right off the bat, and I've only done like three miles since we've uh, been out here on this trip. And it's uh, this, this thing is really rough. Like it has like a textured style to it but it's actually like digging into my thumb. So I don't actually like using this half twist throttle without actually having gloves. It's starting to hurt my hand over time. It's just a little too rough. But I will say what I do like about this bike is I love how I sit. I like the fact that even though there is a hump on this seat and it's not a long seat, so you can't really slide too far back on it. I will say it feels very nice. I'm not having a problem with the stance of it. Um, on this model in particular, the step through design, it is a BMX handlebar style and you can move these front and back. And I will say I absolutely love the BMX uh, handlebars. I love them. I love the fact that you have this extra bar right here. I feel like most bikes should always have BMX handlebars because you can put your phone mount up here. You can put a drink holder up here. You can put whatever accessory you want right in the middle. You can put an extra additional headlight on here if you want. I just like the fact that it's right here. Some bikes have just a little, uh, I don't know what you would call them, but the riser handlebars, but they don't have this bar right here and you can't set anything. And then look, this is all taken up. So I like the fact that they put this on here. Some other stuff up here is you do have a bell. I think it's required in some uh, countries and stuff that you have to have a bell on a bike to sell them. Uh, you could take this off if you want. I'm not a big fan of the bell. So you guys can do what you want on that. Oh, this is not a nice curb to come up. Oh God, <laughs> that was a bad curb to come up. Why couldn't it have been like this curb? This curb has a little uh, thing to go up and down. I think they messed up on the last part. <laughs> I am hearing a slight noise from the bike though. And I'm starting to realize that I believe it's the rear. I think the spokes in the back of this bike are loose because I'm hearing like a clicking noise and I'm pretty sure it's these. So I'm not, if I'm looking at this correctly, these are bent, these aren't straight. So these ones are straight right here and these ones are slightly bent. I don't know if it's gonna come over camera or not, but they like hit right here and then they like bend right there. Some of them do that, some of them don't. Like these are straight, the other ones are bent. So I don't know if that happens during shipping. Like look at this one, this one's like really bad. So I've seen some other complaints about that as well. 
So you guys are gonna have to make sure to uh, contact Aerial Rider if you guys have an issue with your rear wheel. Cause I'm definitely hearing a clicking noise as I ride. All right, so we're in our designated spot where we do our speed test. We're gonna use throttle only, uh, no pedal assist whatsoever. I actually have it turned off because I don't want the pedals to accidentally turn on as I'm just trying to ride the bike. So here we go, throttle only. Let's see how fast it goes, zero to whatever we hit before we run out of road. So one, two, three, go. No pedals. 10, 15, 16, 18, 20. 22, 25, 27, 28, 29, Woo! we hit 30 just really, really quick before he ran out of road. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. It's a pretty decently quick bike, I will say. I'm not mad at it at all. It has definitely good power for the price. Really, seriously, you can't complain. So here is, uh, we're going to use the pedals only. So... I'm gonna move this up in number nine. You can have as many numbers as you want. So you go from one to three, you go to, go to one to five, or you go to one to nine, and that's for pedal assist. I put it in nine because I do like to have a bunch of varieties of uh, how easy the pedals kick on. So this means you have a lot of different options on how much you want it to kick on. So I suggest going from one to nine. It just gives you so many available options. So anyways, we're gonna start no throttle. If you guys can't see this, let me take this off really quick. I'll put this in my pocket so I don't litter. All right, let's get on the way. Pedals only. One, two, three. Woo, okay. I started off pretty good. I need to shift. 10 miles an hour. 15, 20, 22, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Woo, -hoo -hoo. did you guys see that display? 31, 32. Man, we were jamming. 33. Let's go, let's go. Hey, squirrel, get out the way. We're going fast around here. It felt like it picked up pretty good for using the pedals. I'm gonna try that real quick again. Let's see. Oh yeah, the pedals pick up real good. We'll uh, do it a little bit later in a test and we'll mess around with it. But so far the pedals feel great on how fast they activate, but I am gonna go back into uh, zero and turn those off for now because we're just going to stick to the throttle. The biggest thing I've noticed while riding this bike is how loud it is. I got a full face helmet on right now, so my ears are covered. I mean, I still hear a little bit, but you can't hear a lot. And these tires with this motor, absolutely loud. I thought the Rumble Motors e-bike was loud, but I think it's these tires matched up with the motor because these tires are like insanely loud on the road. It feels like a big... Uh, I don't know, like a Jeep with off-road tires on it, just going down the highway, just so loud. So that's just the one thing that I noticed right off the bat. And since there's people in our spot over here, I'm not going to uh, sit around and wait over here. So we're gonna take it off-road right off the bat. Let's come up here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This thing definitely has the power with a 33 amp controller in here. God dang, <laughs> we're moving. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm going too fast. Yeah, I'm going way too fast. Oh, man. Yeah, this bike picks up, man. This bike absolutely picks up speed. Let's come up this little hill. Whee! Yeah, let's go, baby. Let's go. It does feel really good off-road, I will say. Especially the fact that uh, there's no adjustability in the suspension in the back. Now you do have adjustability in the front. So you have this little uh, knob right here. There's actually two. There's a black one on this side and a red one on the right side. And this one on the left side doesn't do anything. There's a screw right in the middle. It doesn't do a damn thing. I don't know. But this one on here does, uh, I believe the compression. It doesn't have any label on it, but I'm pretty sure it's a compression. It's not the preload. And uh, I have it all the way down. The only thing I have noticed on the front is that if you do hit something very big, like head on, um, it feels like it stops before it even bottoms out on the forks. Um, it doesn't feel like it has that much travel in the front. So if you guys are looking for a lot more travel, I don't know, you guys might wanna look at another bike. So check this out. So see this little line, if you guys can see it, this is where my suspension is stopping. It won't go all the way down here. And that's probably because the brakes as well. So it has to stop right here or it would come in contact with the brakes. So that kind of makes sense, but that is not, a lot of travel. I've had a lot of other bikes that have 
like this much travel and this one is very short so if you do hit something big in the front it is going to be a little jarring so just keep that in mind oh my god we're going fast god these tires are working well out here definitely working these are definitely made to go off road a little bit if i had to get a rating right now i'd probably say it's like uh like a seven and a half out of ten it's not the most comfortable but it's not bad at all especially going this fast most bikes can't go this fast and i'm not having a problem I haven't been thrown up out of my seat yet. I'm actually staying connected with the bike, which is a good thing. So not too bad, 33 miles an hour off road. I'm not complaining. And I guess one thing I should point out is that as I'm on the throttle, it looks like the battery indicator goes off of voltage sag. And we were down to uh, three battery bars. So not something I really like to see, but it is what it is. I will say though, my hand is absolutely getting beat up with this uh, half twist throttle. It's ever so slightly bigger than the grip and it's just this texture on the, the throttle. Like it's, that's a huge negative to me. I can just feel my hand like, like the skin just coming off almost. I don't know if I'm just being a big complainer right now, but it definitely feels rough on my hands. So it's just something to think about if you guys were to get one of these bikes. I'm pretty sure you could just change out the throttle pretty easy because it's just one cable coming into this little thing. So you could probably order one from Amazon. Maybe even switch this out with a twist throttle if you want to. I don't see that being a problem. Real quick over here in this test, we normally do the brakes. We also see how this turns. And I will say it turns pretty good. We have these tires aired up to 28 PSI. They go up to 30 PSI. Um, I always like to go slightly under what the tire says. So if I have a bike that says 20 PSI max, uh, when it's cold, I do about 18. Um, just to give it a little bit more of a comfortable feeling, but I also wanna make sure that I'm not airing them up completely to the max, but I wanna get most of the range out of the bike as possible. I don't want it to be too rough, but I don't want it to be too soft. I don't really ride a lot of off-road stuff, but if you do a lot of the stuff we just did, like the dirt path, you're definitely gonna wear air these down a lot more maybe like 20 to 22. But let's check out these brakes right now, 32 miles an hour. Whoa, whoa, wow, like Flavor Flay says, wow. <laughs> oh, you can definitely see our uh, mark right there. I can see one from the other day too, but uh, we started right when that little patch was right there. I started right in the, the beginning of it. That's why the back tire locked up. I try to not lock them up as much as possible, but, uh, we stopped phenomenally good because most of our bikes even when we're doing like 28 miles an hour they stop like right before this or slightly right after it and the fact that we were doing 32 miles an hour and stopped before that line hands down these tektro brakes are phenomenal especially with this bike and everything like that you cannot go wrong with these brakes and the cable management man they did a very good job on it this is a very nice turnaround from when i did the grizzly review to the x class i was not a big fan of the grizzly i think it was mostly the bar setup and the fact that the way the bars felt with the seat being like this i felt like i had no room to kind of move around i just didn't like how that felt but this one i love it i actually really like the placement of where i sit at i feel very comfortable I'm not having any complaints and man, this is very good on safety for these uh, brakes, man. I really like them. <laughs> yeah, these brakes work, baby. <laughs> man, especially after that brake test, holy crap. Now, some other things I like to do on these video reviews is I like to see how fast the throttle works. So let's test that out right now. So one, two, three. Oh, well, it's pretty instant, pretty instant. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, that's that's a nice, solid, like, half a second delay, if that. That's very nice. So if you need to get out of the way, you see a car coming real quick, you just go, go, go. <laughs> and it has decent power. It's not a 72-volt bike. It's not a 60-volt e-bike, but it's also not a 48-volt bike. This is a 52-volt bike. I feel like it's nice and well-rounded, especially with the weight being 79 pounds with the battery. It's a phenomenal bike overall. It's not bad. If I really had to compare this to the Rev 1, which I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask if it's uh, worth going to this one than the Rev 1, I wanna say with this bike is, first off, 
if you're gonna get one of these and you wanna upgrade it to like 72 volt, I wouldn't get the step through design. I would get the high step because then you could put a bag like underneath and you could fill this whole middle section. That's kind of what I like about the Rev 1 is I like the build. I like the fact that you put a basket right in the middle. I mean, you can still put a basket right here, but I do like to have most of my weight in the middle of the bike. So I would have to give the point to Rev 1 for that. But at the same time, with this one being 2100 bucks right now and the Rev 1 being $2,400 right now, and you have to get the basket as well, which I guess you still have to buy the basket for this too. Um, it's an extra 300 bucks right now with it on sale. If these were both the same price, I would say the Rev 1 would be uh, worth it over this bike. But I don't have a problem with this bike. It is slightly faster than the Rev 1 for sure. It does feel like it's very good in the hands, especially being way lighter. It stops way better, so you get way better brake response. And it's not bad. I'm really curious to see how this headlight is in a separate video that we're gonna do going back and forth to work because that's also gonna tell me if the Rev 1 is a better bike than this one because a Rev 1 light is fantastic. This one didn't look as wide. It looked pretty bright in the middle of my garage. Not a big fan of the turn signals as well in the back of this bike either. You really can't see them. But anyways, moving on to some other stuff. I like to see how fast the pedals work. So let's put this all the way up in the nine and let's go one, two, three. Ooh, man, when they work, they work. So one, two, three. All right, that's not too bad. So you get like a half rotation and they start working. So look at my feet placement. So here we go. Once I get one half rotation, so this is all the way on the other side, then that's when they activate. So one, two, three. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's about a, like almost a second delay, maybe like a half a second delay. I'm not mad about that. That's pretty good. It's way better than the Rumble Motors e-bike that was uh, way too instant. I did not like that at all. You would think that you would want an instant pedal response, but when you're just like going like this and your feet are like barely moving, you don't want the pedals to just activate on you by accident. The guy was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Yeah, so when you like really lean on the front of this bike, it just, it hits a wall. Like you push down and it just literally hits like, it bottoms out. But it is definitely light to like lift up and like do stuff. So if you want to like go off the curb and whatnot, makes it easy. You can literally like hop it off the curb. That's how nice this bike is. Normally uh, bikes are very, very heavy in the front, especially a dual motor e-bike. Absolutely insane. You're not going to be able to lift up a dual motor e-bike from the front. You just can't. Um, this one definitely just hop it off the curb you're good to go so if you have something you actually have to jump up over like a curb you have to get up on top you're not going to be able to bunny hop over it but uh you can definitely lift up the front and kind of uh roll into it uh, getting up the curb oh man this thing is absolutely screaming <laughs> this bike is so loud so this is what i'm talking about with the bike being light in the front that you can kind of uh pop over curbs like that Compared to other e-bikes, trust me, that's a nice thing to have. Most e-bikes I cannot do that with. Um, the only e-bikes I can really do that with are like the Suron or the Talaria because they have nice suspension you kind of push down with and pop up or those very, very light e-bikes that I get, but they don't have the speed like this one has. Most of those light e-bikes are like 25, 28 miles an hour and this one is just moving. I think 35 miles an hour is perfect. And I like the fact that it has a class two sticker on this bike. So you can definitely pass it off to a cop as a class two e-bike. Now you still don't want to get caught doing 35 miles an hour because you can't really prove that. But is a cop really going to radar you and be like, oh yeah, I got you doing 35 miles an hour and then tow your bike? Nah. If you had a Talaria or a Suron or uh, something like that, they're probably going to tow it. But this one, nah, it looks too much as a real e-bike. Uh, another thing I do like about this bike is a turning radius. It's really good. You could almost put these in a 90 degree turn. Definitely more than a 45, but uh, I like the fact that it's not limited to like right here because some bikes are limited to that. So when you're moving around your garage, putting it in your like own little storage unit or space, whatever, it's really hard to move it back and forth. Um, but the fact that these wheels turn pretty wide, that's pretty nice. So we started this trip with like 3.5 miles and right now we're at 11.2 coming up to it. So we've done a lot of range so far and it just keeps saying that. Now we're down to two battery bars under full throttle. So uh, that's unfortunate, but when I do let off, it goes up to four. And if I probably sit for a little bit of short of time, it's probably gonna go up to full battery bars. Not a big fan at all about that. I might've said it earlier, but I'm just not a big fan of the whole 
you know, the battery bar situation. I would have liked to seen voltage on here, but then again, these bikes had come out over a year ago. So I don't think they changed too much on these bikes. I'm pretty sure they changed a little bit of things, but the display and the controller and the battery, the rear motor, actually, no, they did change the battery because the old batteries used to be 18 amp hours and these are 20 amp hours. So they did change that, but the display has probably stayed the same and there's no voltage reading. So if there was a voltage reading, that would have been fantastic. Cause once you know your voltage is on what's middle and like dead and full, then you're gonna know exactly where your battery's at instead of going off this uh, crap right here. I'm not a big fan. This thing turns good too, baby. Especially with these tires, you wouldn't think it would turn that good, but it definitely uh, hugs those corners so you can go like 20, 25 miles an hour around a corner. This feels nice. One thing I did notice as I'm coming back home before I do our final review and thoughts of this bike, do not ride on these painted lines with these tires. The way these tires are set up with the tread pattern, it will catch the paint. So we'll catch this because it's raised up the ground a little bit and the tire will literally like shake back and forth and it will feel like unstable. So just be, be very careful of that. I don't want to see none of you guys get hurt. All right, one little quick update is as we've been riding for a while, uh, we're down to 34 miles per hour. And this is legit accurate now. So this is after about, I would say nine miles on the bike, we went down one mile per hour. All right, guys, let's try to get this done quick because it is hot as heck out here, uh, especially in my garage with it being closed because there's a lot of people out there. My gardeners are always doing some stuff. But anyways, overall, I love this bike. Um, some stuff that I did not mention on this bike yet that I do want to go over is you do have a USB port on the actual display right here. You do have a USB port on this side. You guys can't see on the actual battery itself. So you guys can hook up some lighting or LEDs or whatever. Uh, depends on which ones you hook up. Obviously not all of them are gonna work because it depends on the power draw of your LED system. But you can definitely charge some stuff. So if I'm out riding, you need to charge your GoPro, your batteries, or uh, your phone or whatever like that, you can do that with this bike. And the fact that you can have your buddy or something charge his phone as well. And I love the handlebar setup so you can put a phone mount up here so you can have your GPS speed if you wanna have that or your map system if you're like an Uber Eats driver or you just, you know, you wanna just see where you're going on your route and stuff where to turn and whatnot so i like that the headlight looks fantastic on this bike i love the fender setup but i will say the fenders are not metal it does save some weight so i'm not really complaining too much about it but they are plastic the paint on this bike looks great. The seat felt very comfortable. I never came out of my seat. I will say this is not the softest e-bike I've ever set on for suspension wise. Um, the Rev 1 is definitely softer than this bike. And I will say that the Rave e-bike that we had, that one was also softer as well. But overall, it's not a bad bike. The biggest complaints I had about it, and it sounds stupid, but it's really this throttle, like the grips on the throttle, I did not like it. My hand still hurts from twisting this throttle, especially when you hit bumps and you're kinda, your hand shakes. It's kind of moving on these little grips right up here, and I didn't like that. Um, the rear motor is definitely okay, but the spokes on the rear motor are definitely making a noise, and I'm not a big fan of that. So I feel like aerial riders should look into that. I've seen other people on the group pages mention that, and mine definitely does have like a popping noise coming from the rear. So when it looks like my spokes are actually bent on some of them, they're not just that they need to be tightened, they're actually bent. So I don't know what you're gonna do about that. Um, I love the fact you have a class two sticker right here. Um, I would say I love the step through design for people that have back issues or stuff like that, or, or if you're a shorter person, it definitely makes it easier to just kind of get on the bike and then you just slide back. But the bad thing about that is if you wanna upgrade this bike, you can't really go to 60 volt or 72 volt on this one. You're definitely gonna wanna get the high step because then you could put a battery hanging here that will fit in this rear section right here. And you can't really do too much with this setup right here unless you figure something out that's custom made, but it would be easier if you had the high step. Um, there's no adjustability in the rear shock. I was hoping there was. It did not feel that bad, I will say. Um, one thing that I would do on this bike if I did have it, I would probably change out the tires. I didn't have a problem with the tires and the tires are also reflective as well with that little white line that you see on there. But um, they're just too loud for me. This bike is absolutely loud going down the street. It's just screaming. The motor is already loud by itself and the tires just make it worse. So 
I would like to see some just dedicated street tires on here, especially for my type of riding. But if you are going to go off roading, just keep these ones on here. You'd be perfectly fine. Um, but overall, uh, it felt great. I will say the chain slaps a little bit too extra. Like if you're jumping off stuff or going off road, I felt the chain moving ever so slightly, like hitting the frame. And there is no protective piece on the rear swing arm. So just something to keep in mind. You might want to like protect that or something like that, or maybe put something on it just so you don't mess up your paint. But it's a badass bike, guys. Um, I'll have links down in the description so you guys can purchase one if you guys want. Right now, it is $2,100, so $2,099. It could go up because last week when I took the pictures for the intro of this video, it was actually $2,199, and the normal price is like $2,399. So jump on it if you guys are really interested in this bike. You guys cannot go wrong. And if you guys do not want the red, they do have blue, and they have another color as well. They have blue and black and red. So you guys can figure out which one you like more. But I'm going to leave you guys on that note. Thanks for watching. You guys are the true MVPs, and I will see you guys in the next one. It's hot out here. I got to go. Later. <laughs>